This compressor is about 15 year old. It hasn't actually been used for the last 10 years or so. I actually plugged it in a few days ago and it actually blew up. And I've actually found that it was this, the motor storage capacitor. This cover is actually in the way, but I did manage to undo two screws and slide it far enough forwards so that we can actually get this out and have a look at it. So I have bought a direct replacement. So on there it'll actually say what the rating is in microfarads. If you look at this one you can see that it's 32 microfarads plus or minus 10%. The one that's on there is 32 microfarads plus or minus 5%, but this is the closest match that I can actually get to it. It is a little bit larger than the one that we're taking off, but it will still fit in the compressor. If you want to remove this cover, you have to take all this part off here. There's a pressure relief valve there, you've got your dial, your switch, everything at this end is in the way. You also have to unwire everything, which makes it a big job. So by removing the two screws on this cover, I think we've got enough room just to swap this over for the new one. It's immediately obvious when one of these blows up because it fills the place with smoke and by inspecting it you can see that it's blown the end clear off. So it's quite an easy part to identify once it has gone. You do have to be careful with capacitors, they can store a lethal charge. Before we touch this, we're just going to short out the two terminals on the top there to ensure there's no charge in it. It's highly unlikely that there will be, but you do never know. Before you do this, it's a good idea to put some safety glasses on. We've now shorted across them two terminals and obviously there's no charge in there whatsoever. If you take a look in there, the capacitor actually fits onto that part there via that nut. So what I've done is I've put that in there already to ensure it's in the correct place and I've got the nut so that it's reasonably tight. So once we get this in there and give it quarter of a turn, it will actually grip the capacitor and hold it in position. Once the capacitor's in there, you can't then put the wires on, so we need to swap the wires over now. So we're going to take the old one, pull off one of the wires, and place it onto the new one. I'm just going to pull off the final wire. Obviously, before you do this, you do need to make sure that the machine is unplugged. So we've now swapped both of the terminals over. I should also point out that these are quite nasty. There could be some dangerous chemicals in there that could do you some harm. So it's important that you don't get any chemicals that are in there on your hands. And this needs throwing in the bin immediately. So I should now be able to push that up into position. Once it's in position, I can then give it quarter of a turn, which will then tighten it up. So that nut has now gripped that and that is now tight so there's no chance of that working loose. And that is the capacitor that we took out. It is quite common for them to blow, sometimes they just swell up and stop working, sometimes they do blow up like that. Well now I'll just give it a test. And as you can see that is now working perfectly.